Do you have images that you know could be better, but you aren't sure how to proceed? Are you not sure when and how much to crop your images for maximum impact? If you said yes to either of those questions, then keep watching. In this tutorial, you'll get five tips to help you improve the composition of your photos by cropping effectively. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I help beginning and intermediate photographers like you to improve your work, right from capture in camera all the way through to the end of the editing process. So if you're ready to get some cropping tips, let's get started. Tip number one, check the edges of your image and crop to remove any distractions and simplify the image. Let's take a look at some examples that follow that tip. In this image, take a look at the edges. Over here on the right, you see there's a shadow in the bottom corner and a pipe coming out of this building. On the left, it looks like there's a person or half of a person's leg over here on this edge. When you have things like that sticking into the edge of the image, it can be distracting and take your eye away from the subject. Now let's see the cropped version. See the difference? The edge distractions have been removed simply by cropping them out. Sometimes cropping won't get rid of all the distractions and you may have to do some cloning, but check your crop tool and see what you can do with that first. It's always the simplest answer. Let's see another example. In this image that I took at Venice Carnival, the costume character is posed against a wall that matches the color of her outfit. But the green building on the far left here isn't really adding to the story and it's taking my attention away from her. There are four things that will take your eye away from the subject, so you want to avoid having these in the background. Number one is areas of great brightness. Number two, areas of high contrast. Number three, intense or bright color especially warm colors like red, orange, and yellow. And finally, areas of high sharpness. So if the background or the edge of the image is as sharp as the subject, they can compete. Let's see how this image crops. The image has been straightened, so the verticals are straight up and down. As well, this building on the left has mostly been cropped out, so it's less distracting. Notice how your eye goes directly to the subject now. That is your goal. Let's see how this plays out in another image. Remember the four things that I just mentioned? Look at the right side of this image. See this bright white area here? It's drawing your attention away from the subject. So the simplest answer here is to crop it. Now the image is more of a vertical panorama, but it has simplified and eliminated that distraction on the right. In this final example of this tip, you'll see on the left-hand side is another example of a distracting background. The areas of brightness and contrast are drawing your eye away from the lady. So I could do a lot of editing to tone that down, or once again, the simplest solution is to just crop it out. Now the lighting on her and the smoke is the brightest thing in the picture and your eye goes directly to her. Tip number two, subject placement. Use cropping to arrange your composition and place the subject strategically within the frame. Let's take a look at what that means. In this image, the boat is almost centered. If you know about the rule of thirds, you want to place your subject on the intersection of one of the thirds, or in general, just place the subject off center. Something else to note here is that there's a lot of water in the foreground between the camera and the boat. When you have a lot of foreground space like this, it can make the subject feel farther away. Let's see how that changes when I crop it. Cropping in on the bottom and the right has now placed the boat more off center and gotten rid of a lot of the foreground space. Do you see how the boat feels closer now? Neither is right or wrong. Just make a conscious decision when you're doing your cropping. Here's another image with the same problem. Too much foreground space. Notice how far away the two women on the beach seem. Now let's see the cropped version. 
See how that brings them in and they feel much closer to the camera now? There's also a really nice leading line from the edge of the water on the beach leading you directly to the subjects. The line was there before, but now it's been emphasized because we've come in closer. Something else to make note of in regards to subject placement is when you have a subject like this that is facing one direction, generally you want to have space in front of them. So in the case of this portrait, there's room in front of him so you can follow his gaze this direction. So even though there's plenty of space in front of him here, he's also centered in the image. So we want to place him off center while keeping distance in front of him. Here's the crop version. I've eliminated part of the image on the left and still maintain the portion on the right for him to look into. This is not a hard and fast rule that you always have to put space in front of the subject, but what I want you to understand is that if you do the opposite and put space behind the subject, it's going to feel differently. See the difference? Now he just feels a little bit cramped. Neither is right or wrong. Just be aware how your cropping affects the story the image tells. Here's another quick example of subject placement. The little sea turtle is almost in the center of the image here and there's lots of foreground. In this cropped version, I've solved both of those issues. Moving on to tip number three, aspect ratio. Don't be afraid to crop your images in a different shape. Most cameras use the three to four ratio, but don't be afraid of trying panorama, square, or something else. Let's see how that plays out. I took this image in New York City and I loved the graphicness of the shadows on the crosswalk but I found that it was really busy and I really wanted to focus in on the shadows. So this is what I came up with. I cropped it into a long, narrow panorama and took off the tops of the people. So now we're focused on the feet and the shadows. The fact that it's a panorama image really doesn't matter. I crop my images into the aspect ratio or shape that works best for that image. So don't get hung up on locking that aspect ratio. Let's look at another example. This is a really typical fall scene in my province of Alberta. You see the field after harvest. What attracted me here was the shadow of the grain elevators on the field. What you want to make note of here is how much sky there is though. If you look at the division of how much sky there is in proportion to everything else, half the image is sky. That's what's called visual mass. When something takes up a large portion of the image, your eye is naturally drawn there because it's so large. But the sky is not the focus of my picture at all. So let's see how I cropped it. Did you guess? Panoramic. Now the image is almost divided into three strips of color. Green at the bottom, yellow or gold in the middle, and blue at the top. Having the long narrow panoramic also implies a sense of spaciousness. So it works really well with this image. Now let's see what happens if I crop this image of the flower a little bit differently. It's off-centered here, which is not too bad, but I find it just a little bit uninteresting. I'm using the crop tool in Lightroom to show you this, but the same will apply regardless of what software you're using. What I want to do is change the aspect ratio here to square. So I'm choosing one to one, now it's restricted to square. So if I crop in, it keeps it a square. Sometimes square composition just works and sometimes centered also just works. I go a lot by my gut feeling and instincts. The other thing this image is telling me is that there's kind of a diagonal line of this stem and this little bud in the background. And I wanna emphasize the diagonal a bit more. So I'm actually going to tilt it a little bit this way. Do you see how that works? The symmetry of the flower is matched with the symmetry of the cropping. So in this case, square and centered is applicable. You'll also notice that I rotated this image as well, which leads me to tip number four. Rotate or tilt to get the right crop. When you have vertical lines that are straight or horizontal lines that are straight, it can feel very static and stiff. So if you have an image that can be tilted, for example, one that doesn't have the horizon, 
give it a try and see if it makes a difference. Let's see a couple of examples. Here's another floral image. So while the flower is already off-centered, the placement of the subject is okay. But I felt like the petals lining up across here are just a little bit too straight across and it's a little bit boring. So by tilting the image a little bit, now if you draw a line through the petals, you get a diagonal. Diagonal lines can add a sense of movement and dynamic feel to your images. So when you have an image like this, don't be afraid to rotate. Here's another more extreme example. The bird is right in the center of the composition here. His wings form a straight vertical line and his body is a straight horizontal line. So all in all, it's very static and uninteresting. Do you see what I did with the cropping? By coming in a lot closer and tilting or rotating the crop, now it looks like he's in a dive. His wings and body are both at diagonal lines and the image has much more flow and a feeling of movement. Before I move on to the next tip, I wanna tell you that if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna have a bonus tip for you. So if you wanna find out something extra that you can do when you're shooting and when you're processing your photos, stick around to the end. But lastly, I come to tip number five. Crop in camera whenever possible. Take a look at this image. I photographed this outside my window in New York City when I was staying there one time. I was attracted by the fire escape and the light on the side of the building, as well as the planter box. You can see that I used roughly a 60 millimeter focal length here. But when we look at the whole image, there's a lot going on. Check the edges. Is there anything there that needs to go? Yes, a whole bunch of cords and wires. Over here, there's garbage on the fire escape, and I find this entire row of windows at the bottom is distracting. This was my final crop from that image. So while I was able to crop it and create an effective image, I could have done that much easier in camera simply by zooming in. I wanna show you another example. I photographed this fisherman in Vietnam on one of my recent tours. He was nice enough to stop and pose for our entire group. I wanted to capture a sense of who he was, so I included some of the boats in the background. But then I decided it was too busy, so I got a little closer. This time, I did zoom in, but I still wasn't happy with that. I still felt the boats and background were a little distracting. I wanted to focus on him, as his face has so much character. So I got closer yet. This is my final favorite image of the photo shoot with him. Notice how by coming in closer and using a longer lens, I was able to eliminate a lot of the background distraction. So while I might've been able to crop some of the earlier images into something like this, you can't change the perspective. So keep in mind things like poles growing out of people's heads, stuff in the background, sometimes simply by changing your perspective by moving a little bit to the left or the right will make all the difference. Also, doing something that I call zooming with your feet. If you don't have any more room on your zoom lens, use your feet and physically walk closer. I took over 50 images of this man and this was one of my favorites. So keep in mind all of the tips that I've given you in this tutorial. So when you're out photographing, keep all of these tips in mind. Check the edges of your frame. Review your image on the back of the camera. Remember to intentionally position the subject within the frame. You can even rotate or tilt your camera when you're photographing. I often do that as well. Remember I mentioned a bonus tip earlier? Well, you might think I've lost my mind, but it's actually to look at your image upside down. Take a look at this one, for example. Where does your eye go? Remember the four things that I mentioned earlier? Now let's look at it upside down. Where does your eye go now? If it didn't already, your eye should go directly to the bright spot on the bed, the reflection of the bed in the mirror, and this window in the background. So some of those things can be handled with cropping. Let's take a look. See how by coming closer, I've gotten rid of the window and minimized the reflection. And then with a little bit of processing, I toned down the bright spot on the bed. So the final tip is, Looking at your image upside down will not only help you to see what you need to crop out, but where you need to process your images. If you want to learn more, watch this video now. 
and I'll show you more examples using my upside down trick. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single new video. Take care, until next time.